In this video, I'm going to talk about polyneuropathy. Polyneuropathy. And polyneuropathy means diffuse dysfunction of the nerves. Diffuse dysfunction of the nerves of the peripheral nervous system. Diffuse dysfunction of nerves. Now, polyneuropathy syndromes may involve abnormalities of the three types of neurons that are in the nerves of the peripheral nervous system. So there may be somatosensory abnormalities, somatosensory abnormalities from involvement of the somatosensory neurons in the nerves. There may be lower motor neuron abnormalities, lower motor neuron abnormalities from involvement of the lower motor neurons in the nerves. And there may be autonomic abnormalities, autonomic from involvement of the autonomic neurons in the nerves. Now there can be some different patterns of polyneuropathy in terms of which abnormalities appear first or are the worst and which parts of the body are most affected. But probably the most common polyneuropathy syndrome starts with somatosensory abnormalities of the toes of both feet. Let me just draw some lines here to show that there's somatosensory abnormalities of the toes of the feet. The patient will often come in complaining of numbness of the toes or the entirety of both feet. And they may also have pain in that area as well. Anytime there's any kind of abnormality of any of the somatosensory pathways of the nervous system, there may be pain as well as other somatosensory symptoms. And as the severity of a polyneuropathy syndrome progresses, usually what we see is that those somatosensory abnormalities just start kind of crawling their way up the leg and that it's symmetric, that both the right and the left side are involved about the same amount and this will be on the front and this will be on the back as well. It'll go all the way around the, the lower legs on both sides. And then once a person becomes severe enough that these abnormalities kind of get up past the knees, let me just draw these kind of going up past the knees, then the hands also often start becoming involved. First the fingers and then it'll start working its way up the hands and it can work its way even farther up the legs and up the arms. And I'll just draw this on the back side of the hands as well, because it's not going to be just the front side. It's going to be all the way around the hands, just like it's all the way around the legs. And then let me also draw in some magenta stuff here for the lower motor neuron abnormalities that we're usually going to see, usually in kind of the same, same pattern, the same distribution. And we call this kind of pattern the distal symmetric or symmetric distal. So it's the, about the same on the right and the left side, and it's the distal or the distant parts of the limbs that are affected first or most severely. Now the reason for this common polyneuropathy pattern of distal symmetric somatosensory and or lower motor neuron abnormalities is unclear. But one possibility is that it has something to do with the distance an axon goes from its soma. So for instance, if we look at a somatosensory neuron, let's say we take one that's going to go to the toes down here, its soma is going to be way up here close to the spinal cord, toward the bottom of the spinal cord, and then its axon is one of the longest axons in the body. It has to go all the way down here to reach the toes. And the same thing with the lower motor neurons. Its soma is going to be in the bottom part of the spinal cord, but then it's going to have one of the longest axons in the body to get all the way down toward the bottom. Now we think there's something about that distance of the axon that makes the very ends, the very distal portions of the longest axons most vulnerable to different types of pathology that cause these polyneuropathy syndromes, which might have something to do with the fact that a lot of substances that axons need for their maintenance and or their repair if they're injured actually have to be made way up here in the soma and then transported the whole length of the axon. So it might be that that need to transport things long distances along long axons makes the very distant parts of the longest nerves vulnerable to different types of pathology. Now we can see all the abnormalities we can see with dysfunction of lower motor neurons, including of course weakness, but we often see very prominent hyporeflexia or decreased reflexes, hyporeflexia. 
And we often see that out of proportion to the other abnormalities. So for example, a person may have only mild somatosensory and other lower motor neuron abnormalities, but they may have severe loss of muscle stretch reflexes throughout their body, even up into the more proximal parts of the limbs. And the reason for that is not clear either. But one possibility is that not only are the lower motor neurons dysfunctional, but these somatosensory neurons are dysfunctional as well. And the muscle stretch reflex needs both parts because these somatosensory neurons are carrying information about muscle stretch into the central nervous system. And these lower motor neurons are carrying information away from the central nervous system to cause the muscles to contract. So maybe because both parts of the reflex, both the afferent and the efferent parts of the reflex are dysfunctional, that might be why we see real prominent hyporeflexia with polyneuropathy syndromes. Now this pattern of symmetric distal somatosensory and lower motor neuron abnormalities, when it involves both feet and both hands, people have called this the stockings and gloves pattern of polyneuropathy. And it's pretty distinctive for polyneuropathy. You can just imagine a person's wearing st long stockings and shorter gloves, and that's where all their neurological abnormalities are. Now, the other types of axons that travel in the nerves, besides the somatosensory axons and the lower motor neuron axons, are the autonomic axons. And it's usually with the more severe cases of polyneuropathy that we see autonomic abnormalities. But certainly, once all the nerves become sick enough, these autonomic axons coming out of the spinal cord or out of the brain stem can become sick as well. And the autonomic functions can start to be compromised.